Hi guys and welcome back to another video. I am Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. So as you can tell by the title of this video, we are packing for flight attendant training. Yes, you may be just as surprised as I am. I'm packing for flight attendant training for the second time around, okay? But the first time I went to flight attendant training, I didn't do this video. I wasn't aware of how much people wanted to know what you actually bring to flight attendant training. Aspen, stop, stop it, they can hear you. Um, sorry, that's the dog. Um, so every time you get on a forum that talks about flight attendant training, I would say that is one of the top five questions. What do I actually pack for flight attendant training? Even though every airline that you apply with and you get accepted to do training, you get an offer for a CJO, a contingent job offer, a conditional job offer, either or, um, they send you these pre-arrival guides that literally has details upon details of things. Let me tell y'all. Let me just read through it. The, the table of contents. Things to know before arrival. At home preparations. Department of training. During training. Keys to success during training. Training standards. Accommodations. Hotel housing guidelines. A guide to blah 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 image unacceptable attire accessories makeup hair wearing the uniform following training what now training begins at home the glossary of, you know they send you this this big guide <laughs> to tell you what to do and what to expect while you're in training but people still have ten thousands of questions to ask so I'm here, I'm going to show y'all what I'm actually packing as far as wardrobe and just the other little minimal things that you may need to bring that you might forget about. So first, let's go. We're going to jump right into what people really, really care about. And I think that is mostly wardrobe, like what clothes should I actually be wearing in training? And then a lot of people tend to forget, you're not just gonna be in class 24 hours of the day. So you also need to bring lounge wear. You may wanna go out and enjoy a beverage after a long week of training. So bring some cute stuff too. So let's go. And clearly this dress that I have on, little snatch dress, is not appropriate for class, okay? So this is a no-no. No. <laughs> so before we get into this mini fashion show, let me read you all exactly what the pre-arrival guide says as far as appearance requirements during training. Unless in uniform, attire during training is business casual. What exactly is business casual? Business casual is classic rather than trendy. All clothing should be clean, neatly pressed, and tasteful. Avoid tight or baggy clothing. During training, all students must adhere to the appearance requirements provided in this guide. When wearing the uniform, additional requirements will apply. Blah, 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 blah. So, business casual for women. Pants, slacks, khakis, dresses, and skirts must be no shorter than one inch above the knee. Tailored shirts and blouses, tailored knits, and sweaters. Okay, shoes, um, and of course this is all going to vary depending on the airline. Um, shoes for this airline that I'm training with must be closed-toed and heel. Um, not permitted during training are athletic or tennis shoes, suede, ankle strap, cowboy boots, or any type. Um, hosiery may be worn, and then it goes into nail care. Uh, must be clean, well manicured, um, all nails must match in color, French manicures are acceptable, must be polished, maintained, free and free of noticeable, something, 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 complement the skin tone and harmonious with the lipstick. So that is just a insight to what they are expecting and that is pretty general for pretty much every single airline. Um, I don't really want to do compare and contrast with my previous airline because that's not what this video is about. Um, but basically anything that I'm going to show y'all today that I wear for this new training is what I would have worn or maybe something that I did wear 
um, two years ago with JetBlue. So let me show y'all this. I have noticed lately that airlines are becoming a lot more accepting of tattoos. As long as they can be covered while you are in uniform and performing your duties. So during training, that's the same thing as being on the line and flying. You know, they don't want to be seen, right? So I will make sure that every single day, if I'm wearing something that does not, if I don't have anything that's pant length, I'm going to either have on a sock or a hosiery um, that is going to cover that. And most of mine are going to be like opaque tights so that they're dark enough that you can't even see through the tights with that. I also have other tattoos. I have one right here, so I want to make sure nothing on my neckline is going to be drooping down or I accidentally show what I have right here as well. Okay? So this is a dress option. What's next? Okay. Second choice, second option is a nice cropped slack and a business casual top, right? Once again, neckline is not too low, pants are business casual, and I just have on a brown loafer. Very comfortable, easy breezy. You know, I still think I'm pretty cute. Simple. Let me give y'all a skirt cap. Here's a nice skirt and top option for you all. I only plan to bring two pair of shoes to actually wear during training. The brown loafers and the black flats. I'm really trying to minimize everything that I bring because with this training I will have a roommate and we're sharing one hotel room. So I don't have the luxury just to throw my stuff everywhere. So I don't want to have a lot of stuff. So it's just going to be those two shoes, brown or black. And then I'll probably bring a sandal to wear throughout the hotel, um, a workout shoe so I can work out and maybe just another cute casual shoe if I do decide to go out and, you know, just enjoy my downtime. But that's it. Like, and that better be it. I better not overpack this time. But um, yeah, so sweater and skirt. No, your items do not have to be long sleeve or three quarter sleeve. I just prefer to wear long sleeve shirts because they keep me warm. <laughs> it's always cold in classrooms and that doesn't change for flight attendant training. They keep those buildings so, so cold. So instead of me lugging around jackets and sweaters or sitting in class shivering and freezing, I just prefer to wear sweaters even if it is the summertime and it's 90 degrees. Like, it is what it is for me. So you can wear short sleeve shirts. Um, I would be careful with sleeveless things because to me that's not always um, professional looking or business casual. But if you have a cardigan or a blazer or something that you want to put over, the, over that, then that's great too. But skirt is below the knees. Um, shirt is not showing too much cleavage or it's not showing any cleavage at all really and yeah maybe I'll give y'all one more option just because I like doing this <laughs> nice white slacks shirt and a blazer I did forget to mention the only heels that I will be bringing are my in-flight heels that we need to bring with us so they can improve them try them on with your uniform so something like this because it is a little bit more stuffy um, I would probably wear like first date orientation where we're not really doing too many activities. It's just kind of more sit down and listen type of deal. Um, because during flight attendant training you do do a lot of drills, a lot of movements, a lot of walking, a lot of moving around. Just It's not that relaxed and chill, right? So you want to be comfortable but still business casual, right? So something like this I'll probably still just bring just because you never know, you know, might meet the president of the company or something, you never know, I want to be cute. And I just want to show people who I am, don't get it twisted, right? <laughs> just kidding, not really. Okay y'all, and I actually want y'all to take note of the jewelry that I have on during this video as well. One stud, um, stud earrings, very simple necklace and watch, and my nails are very neutral, natural color so let me read directly what this says to you accessory makeup and hair jewelry standards simple conservative jewelry is allowed provided the regulations are met the watch face may be no larger than one and a half inches extreme lifts and sizes are not allowed apple watches and fitness trackers are acceptable okay necklaces 
A single strand of pearls, a single chain of gold, silver, or mixed metal may be worn with the uniform under the shirt or blouse collar. So that basically means that would have to be tucked like that. Dangling objects, adornments, more than one inch are not allowed. So you can have a pendant, but it has to be no larger than one inch. And once again, these are specific to the airline that I'm training for, but most airlines follow these same guidelines. Earrings, these are important because I like to jazz the outfit up with earrings and I have to be very mindful that, you know, I can't go out there with my big old Zara earrings and big old uh, hot girl summer hoops, okay? Um, may be worn as either a single earring in one lobe or a pair of matching earrings on one lobe. Um, gold or silver tone, white pearl or gemstone, diamond, sapphire, etc. Studs or combinations. No larger than one inch in diameter. So if you don't know what diameter is, go back to elementary school and figure that out. Airplane theme earrings that comply with other earring standards. Not allowed. Ear gauges or gauges, however you pronounce it, ear gauges and cuffs, clear spacers for multiple piercings. So if you have a nose piercing or any other piercing, you cannot put the clear little space holders for them. They do not allow that. Um, rings. I don't have on any rings. I don't normally wear rings. When I get married, I will though. But as of right now, usually my fingers are very bare because my hands get pretty swollen very easily so anyways don't get off shack elixir <laughs> a total of two rings may be worn on one hand each ring may not exceed a half an inch in total width engagement and wedding rings when worn on the same finger count as one ring um bracelets gold and silver and mixed metal bracelets may be worn up to one inch in width cloth rope rubber plastic or dangling objects or charms are not permitted oh no rubber so like those little elastic bracelets um you know all kind of people make them those are not allowed um medic alert bracelets are an exception to the standards and do not count in total with a fitness tracker may be worn okay and then to address i think the number one question people ask tattoos this specifically says well, body piercings and tattoos. Visible body piercing and tattoo adornments must not be visible at any time in big, red, bold letters. During training, while in casual business attire or while in uniform. Ankle chains, bracelets, nose jewelry, and finger jewelry are not permitted. Um, you know, people also ask about eyeglasses, so I'll read this one as well. Prescription eyeglasses and reading glasses are permitted and must be professional in style, size and frame, color, and without embellishments or adornments. Sunglasses are worn only when outside. An eyeglass cord or lapel holder in gold, silver, or black may also be used. Um, hair and hairstyles, let, let me just read this. <laughs> hair and hairstyles, hair must be clean, professional, well-groomed, kept neat throughout the day. It should be styled appropriately for business wear and apparel per and appear professional. Please adhere to the following requirements while attending any and all classes, regardless of whether the attire is business casual in uniform or a jeans day weekend. Oh, so we can wear jeans on the weekend. That's good to know. I didn't read, read all of this. <laughs> um... Hair below the top of the shoulders must be pulled back and secured at the sides at all times. Hair that extends more than 8 inches below the top of the collar must be worn in ponytail, bun, or braid at all times. Ponytail must be secured no higher than the middle of the head. You know why I didn't read this, y'all? Because I don't have no hair. <laughs> Clearly. Um, bangs must be no longer than the top of the brow. If a wig or hairpiece is worn, it must be natural in color, be of good quality <laughs> and professional, and meet all hairstyle criteria. Appropriately sized hair accessories are approved in silver, pearl, turquoise, shell, or black tones. Hair and hairstyles not permitted include any with exaggerated root growth, extreme hairstyles, extreme colors, such as multi-contrasting or unnatural colors like purple and green, etc. Personal hygiene. You know what? Most people don't think this is necessary, but it is because people be foul and they just act like it's, it's okay. Personal hygiene. 
Employees must attend to personal cleanliness to prevent perspiration, body and breath odors, and strive to maintain a clean, smooth, clear complexion. <laughs> A lightly scented perfume, cologne, or aftershave lotion may be used. Teeth should present a clean, natural appearance. Employees must have a full frontal complement of teeth. Visible dental retainers and plates should be gum-toned or clear. Braces should be clear or silver. Noticeable hair in nostrils, hair in or... <laughs> Noticeable hair in nostrils, hair in, on, ears, or underarms must not be visible. Eyebrows must be trimmed and long hair removed. Female legs must be free of all visible hair. Um, right now I haven't shaved in like, what, two, three weeks. So this is full growth for me. It ain't visible. I got nice light hair on my legs. But if you grow that dark, thick hair on your legs and you're a little bit lighter toned than me, you might want to shave, honey. Okay? Anyways, let's get to the rest of this packing. <laughs> Alright, y'all. So, I have <laughs> went through every closet and bin in my room and have pulled out everything that I think I may need to bring to training. <laughs> so, we have a stack have a stack of tops, pants, dresses, cardigans and blazers, workout clothes, um, um, what are these things called? Two-piece sets, outfits. I don't really know why those are coming, but I'm bringing them. Skirts, denim, I have one pair of denim shorts, some jeans, sleep socks, workout socks, um, tights, stockings, bras, unmentionables, spanks, because your girl need to be spanked up, um, belts, shirts, mostly all of my God is dope shirts, lounge, sweatpants, and pajamas. So, yeah. Do y'all think this is enough clothes for 31 days? I think it is. <laughs> I might have went a little overboard. <laughs> the real tea is, is that, so if you were flying, you get a regular ticket, and that means you can check two bags, and then of course you'll have like one carry-on. But I'm not flying. I'm driving, so I can bring as many bags as I want. But once again, this room situation, I'm going to more than likely have a roommate. I done pray to, to God that, you know, hopefully the class number is uneven and I'm the one person that doesn't have a roommate. But my luck is not set up that way. So let me mentally prepare to have a roommate. So I just really, really, really don't want to overpack. And all that stuff on the bed right now is really just looking like a lot. But I think I need it all. And training is in Dallas. Did I mention that? Training is in Dallas. I live in Houston, it's like a four hour drive away, so I decided to drive. One, because I want to have my car, and two, because I want to have my car, and three, because I want to have my car with me. When I trained the first time, it was in <clears throat> Orlando, Orlando, Florida, and I really think I left the training facility, maybe me and Fawn went to the mall like one time. I think we might have went out to eat one time. Not even really. I don't think so. I went out to eat when my family came to visit me. Um, I went and got a haircut towards the end of training. Got my nails done. I really never left the facility that much. But there was really no reason to either. Because they just had everything for us. I um, mean the food was good there. So anyways. I just, I just want to have my car. So I'm driving. So let's see how much stuff I can really get packed up into this suitcase and how many suitcases I'll need. Hopefully not a lot. Okay. Hey, good morning, good people. It is the next day, so I finished packing. See my three suitcases over there in the corner. Finished packing all of my clothes last night. Now this morning, or really it's almost evening, it's 11.27. My parents wanted to take me out to breakfast to celebrate or or to send me off with a full belly or whatever um so yeah and I just have to do the last minute things um toiletries makeup electronics my hats let me not forget my hats because I'll be real mad if I left my ball caps not that I can just really wear them but 
you know, when this haircut gets rough, honey, I'm gonna have to cover the head. So anyways, let's get in here with this makeup. Okay, I almost forgot that I need to pack medicines or just, you know, whatever. Just in case I get a little cough cough or a headache or. No, I'm really losing it because I almost forgot to pack jewelry. Like, come on now. So, let's see. All right, y'all, I am all packed, bags in the back, and I'm on the road heading to Dallas. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Tried to just give y'all an idea of the things that you definitely need to bring to training and just the things that you don't wanna forget. Um, until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share.